Hey, blessed people, welcome back. I want to thank you so much for uh, your attendance and for your ears to hear. Uh, one thing I know is that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us in this hour, uh, and we really need to be in tune to what He's saying uh, and living by His Spirit so that God can accomplish the things in the earth that He so needs to do in this hour. And I just think it's such an exciting thing uh, that God chooses us and that we get to be a part of it. Amen. And I want you to know that you're important, that you're valuable, and that you, uh, so long as you have breath, uh, you have opportunity so that God's kingdom and his, his, his influence can be um, spread across this earth and he can have his way with this earth. Remember, all creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of men. That's me and you, brothers and sisters. I don't care how obscure you may be to so many on this earth. Maybe people don't know your name. That's not important. God knows you in the spirit. He values you in the spirit. And that you, uh, regardless of where you are, if you're in the middle of the city or if you're in the middle of the country and there's no one for miles around you, it makes no difference because the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal anyway. And the battle that we're fighting is in the heavenlies anyway. It's not on this earth. You are making a difference. As you pray in the spirit, as you seek God in the spirit, you are making a difference um, and you are a part of what's ushering Jesus back to the earth to rescue this earth and to reconcile it back unto him. That's so much of what this, this is about. And so I wanted to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you today once again. I apologize uh, for that last video. Um, I encourage you to look past the video itself. Uh, man, I was way too close to the camera. But... What I encourage you to do is to listen to the word because I know that the Holy Spirit was speaking in that. It would be an easy thing for me to just to erase it because of the visuals, but I think that's part of what God's teaching us is it's not about the flesh. We have to have ears to hear. Think about John the Baptist. He's walking around in camel hair, eating locusts and honey. He must have been a bizarre looking dude. Uh, but are we able to hear the word of God with bizarre looking dudes that come to you with videos that aren't professionally made? Are we willing to hear God through that? What is the Holy Spirit saying? If I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, now Luke Harding is a great example. I encourage you to tune in to Luke Harding. Just Google him and listen to what this prophetic voice is saying in the earth today in a very quiet and humble way. Uh, and he's... You know, not in some big mega church either, but he is a, a part of what Jesus is doing in the earth and he feeds my spirit. So regardless if he stands up in some beautiful platform in a gorgeous church with crowds of thousands of people, that's not what draws my ear to hear. What I want to hear is what is the Holy Spirit saying in the earth today? So I would encourage you to look beyond the, you know, the lack of, uh, professionalism perhaps in the video itself and listen to the words because it's the words that are truth. How do you know that the words are truth? How do you know that the words are truth and it's what the Holy Spirit speaking? It's because you are reading the word in your quiet time and you're allowing God to lead you through this. Um, and so I just encourage you with that. Father, I thank you for those who have an ear to hear today. I thank you, Father, for your light that is exploding in the spirits of your people and for this power, Father, of the Holy Spirit that is, that is, that is breaking out of them like a broken vessels, Father, just breaking out of them and, and making a difference in everyone that they see. As they come across people, Father, people are going to begin to take notice of them. Their influence is going to be, be, begin to infiltrate the flesh of others and draw others to you, Father. Uh, as you begin this great revival on the earth. And I just, I just proclaim that anointing upon the ears that are hearing today, Father. Uh, and I glorify you in that, Father. I thank you for the opportunity that you would take someone like me and, and those listening. And Father, you would impart your spirit and that you, beyond uh, the failures uh, and faults that are in our past, through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus and through grace, Father, you transform us into um, righteous beings that can hear from you and, 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 and that can worship you and we can dwell together. 
wow, what a, what a glorious Savior. And I give you praise for that, Father, and for everyone that's hearing. I thank you for victory in their lives as well. So I wanted to share with you just a little bit more about living within the whirlwind, living in this secret place. Remember what God said to uh, Elijah. You know, his voice isn't in the whirlwind. His voice isn't in the thunder. His voice isn't in uh, the earthquake. His voice is in that still quiet place. So when we talk about entering in the whirlwind, uh, in, in, in the natural, you see all this uh, this activity and all these things, but you know it's not in all of that in the whirlwind with all the cherubim and all of the, the the lightning flashes. That's not what we're there for. We're there to commune with the Holy Spirit and just to have that time where God talks with us within the whirlwind, being that wheel within the wheel that is responsive to His voice and moving in conjunction with His Spirit. So I encourage you to stay there. And there's a couple of things that I want to share with you that I think are essential um, in us remaining in the secret place where we hear from God and not being uh, led astray by counterfeits. The first part of that is to find rest in Him. Uh, I shared with you before, and I just, oh gosh, I hope that, that, that really infiltrated into your hearts and into your spirits and it blessed you. This whole idea of belief. Faith is awesome and a faith without works is dead. So we should be working our faith in the earth. When God speaks to us, we need to do what God says to do. But there's so much of our life that isn't God speaking to us to do this or that. So much of our life is just trusting in him and remaining in him. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 3 is such a such a, uh, a beautiful illustration. If you go into Hebrews, read Hebrews chapter 3. God talks about his chosen people, who he does all these miracles. He parts the Red Sea. He, he does all of these signs and wonders in Egypt, and he brings his people out um, of Egypt uh, rich, just with all kinds of things. He, he just pours his blessing upon them. He delivers them and he brings them out. And they wander around in a wilderness because they can't enter into his promise for unbelief. You know, he sends 12 people into the land and they look into the land and say, well, we can't do this. There's no way we can conquer, conquer these giants. And so God does so much for them. Maybe read all the things that God does in, in, in the exodus of the children of Israel, and they look and they don't enter into the promise through unbelief. Not through a lack of faith, through unbelief. And the biggest struggle in most people's lives is to believe that God, first of all, that God chose you. Many people don't get beyond that, that God chooses you. Hear me, God is choosing you. God loves you. God has a plan for you. I know he has a plan for other people, but I'm not talking about them right now. I'm talking about you. God has a special plan for you. He chooses you. He, he has imparted his spirit in you. He has given you uh, this gift of tongues. And if you haven't began to speak in tongues, it's in you. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in this heavenly language. What is this heavenly language? It is the dialogue that takes place above the firmament. That's what this, this is. We can pray in the throne room of God with all of the other creatures and the angels and all of, all, 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 through a prayer language that connects our spirit directly to God, goes past this limited mind and this limited vocabulary, and allows such power in our prayers. And God gave that through to you, this prayer language. Begin to, by in faith, Begin to close your mind, open your spirit, and allow this language to flow out of you. And then don't listen to that voice that tells you that it's a lie, that you're making it up. Don't listen to that. Begin to pray in the spirit. God chose you for that. God chose you to be a, a conduit of his spirit, to allow his glory to flow through you into the earth. That's you. And one of the reasons we don't enter into the promise is because we don't believe that we are chosen. It's so hard for us to look at ourselves and see, why would God even choose? Look, look at all that's wrong with me. Why would God ever choose me? That's the devil. That's the counterfeit. That's what's trying to get you off. God did choose you. Read the word and see. 
He calls you his child. He calls you his son. How? Through grace, through Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. All of our sins are forgiven. All of them. All of our sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness. He, he remembers them no more. He chooses you to be his child. Believe that. That's not faith. That's belief. Don't you wish you could do just do something to make that happen? Then we would feel worthy, right? But that's the whole point. Belief is just trusting him. Just trusting him. So you have to believe that he loves you. You have to believe that he chose you. You have to believe that he has a special cause for you and that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the end. There's some of you out there that God, you know God has called you. You know what the call is, but you've given up on it because you think that you have made yourself unworthy of the cause. What I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, in great love is if that's what you're thinking, you don't understand grace. He who began a good work in you will complete it until the end. Don't give up the race. Paul says we run a race when we run it to complete the race. And we don't run it like somebody who's just beating into the air. We run it with purpose. God put a purpose in you. You got to believe that. You got to continue in that. Put your hands to the plow and don't let go. God has called you to that. So to stay in this, the whirlwind is to believe and to not move. You stay there. You believe and you just don't move. You don't allow the lies of the devil to pull you out of the glory of God. You don't allow the lies of the devil to begin to erode your mind into thinking that you're not worthy, to begin to think that you've got to do certain things in the flesh and to move out of that out of the glory of God. You, 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 you believe him and so you stay in his spirit. You continue to keep that light switch on in your head and not flip it off and go into the flesh. Paul says, says, I don't run this race like I'm beating in the air. What's that? First Corinthians 9. Let me look and see. I need to give you a scripture for that. Um, 1 Corinthians 9, 26. Paul says, I don't run the race like I'm beating the air. As a matter of fact, he says, I punch myself. <laughs> Read it. He said, I punch myself. Why? I punch my flesh in the sense to say, my flesh will not rule over me. Right? I crucify the flesh in me so that it doesn't pull me out of the glory of God. It doesn't pull me out of this whirlwind, the secret place with him. I punch my flesh. I don't allow my flesh to put thoughts into my head to tell me I'm, I'm unworthy. I don't allow my flesh to put me into situations where I'm defiling the temple of God. I punch my flesh and I crucify my flesh so I may stay in the glory and so that I live the light switch stays on. Light, Jesus, life, that stays on in me. And I live by his spirit continuously. To abide in the whirlwind is to do that, is to put to death the deeds of the flesh, which is really easy, guys. It's not like, see, don't get into this do mentality. It's by grace that we are saved. It, so don't get into this do mentality that I got to somehow punch myself every day. That's not what he's saying. Uh, what you do. And what does Romans 8 say? It says if you live by the Spirit, you don't have to worry about the flesh. So many preachers are preaching today what you must do and what you must overcome. No, Jesus already did it and he already overcame it. What you have to do is live by the Spirit Romans chapter 8 and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Live by the Spirit you won't listen to the lies of the flesh. Live by the Spirit and stay there. And when these little voices come and tell you, oh, this is dumb or this isn't God or you don't, you're not hearing, you, you, you throw those things away. You stay in the Spirit. You strive after Him. You think God, as you, as you seek Him, do you think God's going to allow you to, to, to go astray? Stay in Him. And remember this one thing. A huge part of of remaining in the presence of God. And charismatic Christians get so off with this. To stay in the whirlwind is to read his word because that's where truth is found. Not to read a scripture here. Oh, I like this scripture here and I like this scripture here and I like this scripture here and I like this scripture here. Read scriptures in context. Read the truth in context because what the devil does is pull scripture out and says, well, this is what God means by this. To do this, to do this. 
So read scriptures in context. You want to stay in the whirlwind and not be led astray by lies? Know the truth. And God, Jesus said, my words are truth. So know the truth. Uh, read the Bible and pray and, and stay in that presence of God through belief. What does Hebrews say about belief? And this is, this is the thing that I really wanted to share with you is those who believe enter into rest. What is rest? Rest, and so many of us won't rest. You know, God says on the seventh day, he rested and that on the Sabbath we are to rest. What does that mean? That means we abstain from work. We enter into this place of resting in him. And many of us can't do that. We have to continue to find something to do to work. And, and that's the problem. That's where we start beating the air. We're finding something to do. So we're running a race like we're beating the air. No, if you believe in him, you rest. If you believe in him, you know your needs are taken care of. If you believe in him, this peace is going to abide with you because you know in him is peace. In him is joy. And you rest in those things. When you get into this antsiness of having to do something, that's a lack of belief. If you truly believe in him, you'll never be anxious. Ooh, that's tough, but think about it. Process that. If you truly believe in him, you will never worry. Never. Read his word. He's already got you in the palm of his hand. If you believe, you won't worry. You won't be anxious. You will live in peace and you will live in a rest in him. And you won't feel like you have to do something to make him move. You rest in him, trusting, knowing that he's going to take care of the things that, that, that you care about. So I encourage you, just let's step into this level. Let's step into belief. Let's rest in the secret place. Rest within the whirlwind. Read the word. Let's not live this life like we're beating the air. Read the word, know the truth, and rest in him. And he's going to bring those things out of you that he put in you. He who began a good work in you is going to complete it. He'll build you. He'll put you in the right places. He'll put you with the right people. He'll do those things with you. He'll, he'll direct your steps and remove the obstacles. Believe in him and rest. And these things will come to pass. I declare it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I declare it unto you that all of those doubts within your mind that are hindering your belief, that they be removed now in the name of Jesus and you step into a new level of belief. All of you who are listening, and me too, step into a new level of belief. Father, I thank you for that. I proclaim it in Jesus' name by the power of your spirit, and I glorify you in that, in Jesus' glorious, glorious name.